we've been working towards moving modules to the island and to actually achieve it is, uh, is really great for the whole team. There's a bit of buzz about the whole place. The key feature of the trailers is that they hold uh, the platform flat at the top. So whatever ground you're tra traversing across, it might be undulating, uh, there's no load put into the structure it's moving. The top deck of the transporter actually stays on a plane, stays on a flat plane, so there's no stresses in introduced into the structure that it's moving. We're so proud of this module yard team and going first is a privilege and uh, with that comes responsibility. So we take it seriously and this team out here has really done a superb job of living up to that philosophy. It's a big milestone for the project to start clearing these modules out of the yard. It frees up more space for them to get on and attack the train two modules. And um, I was really proud to have the opportunity to be here to watch the last module get loaded out and see the first five welded down on the barge. Um, just a nice, smooth, boring, slow loadout process. We don't like it when it's exciting. So it's the tallest and longest module in the series of six. Uh, presents us a bit of a challenge to uh, go across the road. The camber of the road is so high that the module cannot trans transfer across that road camber without running out of suspension travel. Effectively what we do is make the slope half the angle and we do that by installing temporary crane mats uh, that, that breaks the slope, that lengthens the slope and allows us to transfer that module without the transporters running out of suspension travel. The program here has about 80 modules and the planning for that would have started maybe two and a half years ago. But for one individual module, it's probably um, the detail planning is probably four or five months and it becomes more intense the closer you get to the actual movement time. So in the previous uh, 72 hours we would be focusing on very specific details of the move. The modules are prepared for the sea voyage. We uh, spend some time adding uh, preservation measures to protect them against the, the environment that they'll be subject to. We seal all the pipe ends. The electrics are usually wrapped in plastic. Uh, you'll notice the modules have quite a lot of uh, special tape that we use to seal the, the enclosures. Also the coatings are suitable for the marine environment. It's a long route. It takes about 32 days for the voyage to complete once we sail from Lanshabang and to get to Curtis Island. We have to worry about weather. There are some incidences of cyclones in the area, so we have a, a plan in place where we will monitor the weather for 350 nautical miles and then the barge and the tug can respond and move in a different direction. Uh, the weather monitoring system has been contracted to handle this. We have to continue with the welding and finish that, and then we're also have to put the barge into, into a proper trim and stability state, so we'll be adding some ballast water or taking it out. We've actually tried to eliminate the need for ballast on these barge voyages by stowing this, the cargo in particular positions on the barge so as to avoid that, so we can trim, use the cargo for trim and stability and heal. There will be a total of 22 voyages. This is number one. Uh, the, the, the barge we're using in this case, it's a 122 by 36 meter barge. Uh, we'll use this twice in the works. Then we'll be coming back to a, a homogenous barge, which is 114 meters by 36 meters wide, and we'll have five of those barges on the works continuously going back and forth between Curtis Island and Lancaster Bay.